I wish my life was balanced. That would be probably boring. I, I don't know if that's even realistic. I like to focus more on managing the chaos. <laughs> Welcome everyone, I'm your host Gabe Howard and today we are live in studio with Brooke Burke. Brooke is a television host, cancer survivor, entrepreneur, fitness educator, philanthropist, podcaster, and woman's health advocate who has been thriving in Hollywood for decades. But the title that she holds dearest is that of mother to her four children. Brooke, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. You have an amazing voice, by the way. Ah, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, today's topic is self-care for working mothers with a specific focus on the idea that working moms can't have it all, but they can have more. But I got to tell you, Brooke, just from reading your bio, it sure makes it seem like you have it all. It's slightly exhausting to hear it <laughs> said like that. I don't know if any of us have it all, but I'm sure trying. Well, I think that is very fair. You know, I, I do not have children. So I asked my sister, who is the married working mother of a very energetic eight-year-old, what is on the top of her mind when it comes to her own self-care? And she said that she's worried about being an almond mom. Now, I, I've never heard of this term, but it's a TikTok phrase that basically means that parents are worried that by taking a healthy interest in their own lifestyles, better eating, exercises, etc., they will inadvertently give their kids a skinny or unhealthy body image. Oh. Yeah. In other words, their children will become obsessed with weight loss, looks, etc. Now, my sister pointed out that our whole family struggles with weight and body image issues and that while it is important to be healthy, it's also important to love the skin you're in. So her very specific question is, how does she ensure that she doesn't pass along her body issues to her daughter? This is a really important topic. Um fully loaded. You know, I haven't heard that term either, almond mom, but I'm going to stick that in my brain right now and take that home with me. Um, you know, the relationship with food, I think, is uh, sometimes a fragile one. I'm raising three daughters. I have a son. My fiance has two kids. So there's a whole lot of everything. Because I'm in the health and wellness industry, I have to be extra careful with the words that I choose and the way that I approach my own relationship with food. I love that they know how to prepare a meal, but... I also have to let them be kids, you know, so I do my best, I encourage, I prepare them with great options, and then I let them make their own choices, and I have to choose my words carefully, how I address myself, my body, my, my own habits. It's tricky. I imagine that it's very tricky. You know, in, in writing questions for this podcast, one of the things that I wanted to say was, how do you achieve balance? Uh, but luckily, I researched you, and I know that you do not <laughs> like the term balance. Why not? What's wrong with having balance in your life? I mean, if we look up the, the definition, it's really about a moment where everything is equal, and I don't think that's realistic. And I, I joke around about the concept of balance all the time because I think it's wishful thinking. I think it's too much pressure. I like to focus more on managing the chaos. I wish my life was balanced. That would be probably boring. I, I don't know if that's even realistic. I don't know. It sounds like you feel about balance the way a lot of people feel about happy. Like like happy is a goal, mm -hmm. right? You can be happy, but then people say, well, I have to be happy all the time. And that's mm -hmm. that really sets yourself up for failure because there's so many emotions. Many of the working moms that I talk to, well, just that I just talked to, but mm -hmm. that I specifically talked to in preparation of this show, they specifically stated that their purpose in life was to raise good children. Well, first of all, the word good, like I have a little bit of an issue with that, right? Like I wanna raise children that have character. I wanna raise children to be who they're supposed to be. I'm not trying to raise them to be who I wanted them to be. I got to give birth to them and give them life, but now I get to guide them through life, right? So good is, that's a lot of pressure. I have good ones and bad ones and strong ones and defiant ones. And my children are for sure my priority, but I remember who I was before I had children, the evolution of who I am today. And I allow myself to be equally important. It sounds like a lot of working moms really focus on the things that they missed rather than mm -hmm. the things that they were present for. Is, is that common? Mm -hmm. It seems like it's common in everyone, especially since COVID. Everybody's just like, well, here's all the things that we missed instead yeah. of giving themselves credit for all the amazing things that we achieved. I mean, we pivoted as a nation, which yeah. is amazing. But we're talking about moms. Well, so. no, but that's beautifully <laughs> said. I, I, I love the way that you put that. Um, and looking back, I think I wrote a piece about that at a point in time about making it up, making up for it with quality, not quantity. And that's a message that I used to share with my children. Like the time that we do have together is going to be deep um, and connected and full of love and all of the things that we need. But I think parents get to do everything they dream of doing. I think you get to be a committed, respectable parent 
and an entrepreneur, a business person. And I think we teach our children lessons in those sacrifices. I think that we have to give ourselves freedom to put ourselves on top of the to-do list. We deserve it, we're worthy of it. I spend a lot of time changing inner dialogue, self-talk, quieting down that voice, that voice of shame, that voice of guilt, that voice that gets in your own way. And we have to take those moments and know that self-care allows us to navigate better. Wellness, well-being, however you want to phrase it, is such a big picture from how we treat ourselves, how we meet ourselves, how we see ourselves, how we care for our bodies, what we put in our body. All of these things that are so important to our overall well-being. Brooke, so we've, we've talked about self-care in, in the, the 30,000 foot view, but let's talk about specifics. What is your favorite self-care? Time. Um, the shift in the world right now gave us some time. I used to say time slows for no one and then boom, like all of a sudden it did. I was always grinding, moving so fast um, as a businesswoman, as a mother, raising a blended family. I never had moments to slow down and now I make those moments. Like I'm in control of my time, even though it's moving quite fast. So I think that um, self-care, a big part of it is checking in with yourself. And in order to do that, you gotta slow down. And usually we don't slow down until there's a breakdown, a physical breakdown, a mental breakdown, an event that happens in life that forces us to slow down against our own like free choice, right? Right. To right. do that. Maybe it's a medical issue, a mental issue, whatever that may be. So I think if we shift our lifestyle and our commitments a little bit and learn how to take better care of ourselves, I think that road to longevity is much easier. We don't have time to not take care of ourselves, period. And and you can make time, and it doesn't have to be an hour, and you don't have to drive to a class. You can do it at home. You can find free content. You can work out with me online. You get on YouTube. There's so many different ways to do it. If I only have 10 minutes, I'm going to do something really valuable for myself in those 10 minutes to shift myself into a healthier space of, of feel good. And I don't compromise. I, I don't. I I steal those moments. Those are my moments <laughs> that I need. I think people believe that self-care is an afternoon, mm -hmm. is several hours, is you invested thousands of dollars in a it's hobby true. or a class, but you've described it as moments and, yeah. and the only time limit you gave was, was 10 minutes. What are some self-care techniques that only take a moment or 10 minutes? Maybe moments are easier for us to wrap our head around, right? Maybe I'm gonna do a DIY, really inexpensive homemade spa in my own room, in my own bath with some Epsom salt and a great playlist and a candle and some of my favorite fragrances. Maybe I spent $5 on that and I took 10 minutes to just reset my whole mood and my time and I locked the door and I told the kids, don't you dare come in here, this is my moment of me time. Maybe it's finishing that cup of tea, maybe it's a walk. I used to laugh at that. I used to think we needed an hour. I used to think 10 minutes wasn't good enough. Like I knock out breakfast in the morning right now for my kids and I. I'm not exaggerating in three minutes. Wow. And I don't mean like cooking and packing. I mean blender, shake, I line up three cups, I'm driving the kids to school, I'm fueling our body. I know they have everything that they need to focus for their brain, for their energy. I like that concept of simplifying wellness. I believe in that. I think it's possible. Um, and I hadn't said it like that before, so I'm glad you, you mentioned that. Moments. Moments are easier to wrap our head around than carving out a whole day, an hour, an afternoon. Not that that's a bad idea. <laughs> Brooke, you're a big believer in the importance of fueling your body, so much so that you invented your own superfood. Can you tell us all about longevity and, 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 well, why did you invent it? Yeah, well, I wish I invented it, but it was actually a collaboration between a lot of people, but thank you for that. I would have invented it if Forever Brands didn't do it first. You know, BB Body is my fitness app, my wellness app. It's a big picture. Um, we're simplifying wellness together. Superfoods is something we hear a lot about. A lot of people don't know what superfoods are. Longevity is a superfood powder. It's a, a blend of a bunch of amazing things that we need like maca and cacao and goji berries and herba mate and matcha like natural ingredients but I think just learning how to care for our body allows us to get through the grind and the demands of the day. You know Brooke you speak a lot about exercise and nutrition which are both very very important but you know since it's a mental health podcast mm -hmm. I, I figured I should throw in a mental sure. health question <laughs> <laughs> at least it's something. Aren't they all aren't they all woven in together? Right they're know? supposed to be but for some reason mental health and physical mm -hmm. health are often separated so I like that you said that they should absolutely be connected but I do want to ask about mental health and mm -hmm. mental wellness. Is it is, is as important as the other two? I think they go together. Um, if I don't 
self-care for myself and allow myself to be worthy of self-care, I'm not going to feel good. And, you know, I connect those dots, mind, body, spirit, the mind, the mental, the physical part of it. It's all connected. How I talk to myself, how I treat myself, how I feel psychologically, not necessarily physically how my body looks, but how my body feels and, and how I approach that. My mom is in her late 70s and she's working on core strength and balance um, to improve her mental well-being. And that's a real thing. Mental well-being, it's all intertwined. And that's the big picture, I think, here also for your audience. Big picture. Very, and very important. Brooke, I, I, I do have to ask, don't we hate the word balance? We hate the word balance. <laughs> <laughs> I have to stop saying that because it's following me around. <laughs> what I really said was balance is bullshit. That's, how, that's where it all it. started. <laughs> I love it. You say BS, but that was the headline. I'm like, well, it is. Can't life be a little bit messy? Can we be okay with that? My life is so messy. If I posted a picture of my smoothie spilled in the car, that would get more attention than anything else I do, right? But that's the reality of it. When I decided to open up my family life and talk about everything, that's when I created a relationship with women around the world because it's just going to go wrong. We're going to get it wrong. Why is that not okay? I get it wrong all the time. And then I learn. I take those moments. I try to do it a little better. Not maybe right, but a little bit better. And then I grow like as a human being, a woman, a mother. So... I don't know. I like messy. I like what you said there about you're not trying to get it right. You're just trying to get it better. Yeah. I think that's going to speak to a lot of people. I'm just learning. I'm just here to learn. I learn from my kids. I tell them the same thing. They really beat themselves up just like we do. Brooke, I love that. Thank you so much for being here. Where can folks find you online and tell folks about your app? Thank you. I'm easy to find. It's Brooke Burke all the way across the board. BrookeBurke.com is probably easy. My app is Brooke Burke Body, and I have an amazing community of support. I have new content. It's for everyone. Um, longevity at Brooke Burke also has great recipes. And But I'd love to hear from your audience. I'd love to connect. And really, the app is for everyone. And I take that feedback very seriously and create content for all of us. So thanks for having me. I love this conversation. This is such an important conversation. And um, it really is about harmony and it's a big picture. And we have to connect those dots. So thanks for letting me, letting me chat about it and chime in. Oh, you're very welcome. And I want to say thank you to our audience as well. My name is Gabe Howard and I'm the author of Mental Illness is an Asshole and Other Observations. If you like what you saw here and you want to see more from Healthline, please hit that like and subscribe button. We'll see you next time.